So, welcome everyone. This is a, a huge room and a decent audience. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Um, so, my name is Jan Kisker. I'm working for Siemens Corp Technology. Um, usually, I'm talking about uh, low level stuff like, like kernel development, embedded systems, real time virtualization. Uh, I would actually like to attend a talk in parallel to this one, but uh, today I'm going to talk about. Uh, something more high level um, about a collaboration project that we started this year together with uh, other member companies um, on a topic, yeah, it's called about civil infrastructure platforms and I would like to introduce you to what we are doing, what we are heading for and then how the first steps uh, already look like. So, as we heard in the keynotes, as we heard in various talks, Linux is everywhere. It's not just in the cloud. It's in our daily lives also all around us. In various systems we have, in industrial systems, for controlling um, machinery, um, for organizing transportation systems, transportation infrastructure, um, for distributing and generating energy and many other systems in healthcare systems, um, in building management systems, and on and so forth. So Linux is pervasive in all these systems. And um, yeah, basically you will find Linux systems in all these devices more and more. You will find also some other things uh, still these days, but it's a consolidation going on in this area. So we are talking about these domain. We are, we are clustering together as the the civil infrastructure systems. So what are they? Um, these are technical systems responsible for the supervision, control, management of infrastructure supporting human activities, um, including all the domains I mentioned before. And these networks are essential service for quite eventual services, provide shelter support for social interaction, economic development. They are the society's lifeline. So we all depend on it more than we probably realize because they are just working. And if they wouldn't work, we had a problem, a massive problem. Um, and well, they are running Linux. So what is the difference of all these systems compared to what we usually know on our mobiles or on our servers or in the cloud? Well, there are some core characteristics that make those systems different from other ones. Um, we call them industrial grade. What does it mean? Well, they have reliability requirements, which are well, probably similar to other systems as well, but for a different purpose. Um, they have functional safety requirements, not all of them, but many. You want to expect that the train breaks when it has to break, and that's for sure. If your cloud service fails, well, you may have other problems, um, but this thing rules over the life of people and over high assets to be protected. They also have security requirements, um, specifically more than these days we will see this, and they have real-time requirements, means they have to react on certain actions in time, um, and there is no chance or there's no um, option for failure in this. But what makes them really different from a typical server or specifically from your mobile devices they have a very long lifetime. You're not throwing away those systems after they've been built after a couple of years and replacing them continuously. We have them in, in operation for decades, literally. It doesn't necessarily mean that the software which have been written 40 years ago is still in use. Sometimes there is, but um, it definitely means that those systems have to be replaced in their uh, defined architecture and defined environment that has been defined decades ago, and it will like, look like this in the future. And that brings in a very conservative update strategies already of systems today. So the providers and also the users are very careful in updating any parts of these systems. Um, they want to mi minimize the risk of any regressions because if they fail, as I said, high asset is in danger. Um, and the updates involve sometimes also a lot of formal regulations um, to ensure that the result is still safe, is still secure. And these formal regulations require a lot of additional non-technical efforts, um, thus make the updating costs extremely high. 
So the business behind it, the business drivers behind it um, are about reducing, of course, the cost like everywhere, and specifically the maintenance cost. Not just on the software or on the physical system itself, on the whole. You don't want to go out for some remote system and, and actually attach to it and do some physical maintenance work because this is extremely costly. Um, so whatever we do it has to maintain the remote maintainability, for example, of those systems. Um, there are often masses of those systems automatically deployed, so you have to really look into the cost and introducing this. Um, then there is, of course, the need to reduce the development cost on this system. We will see where this comes from. We don't want to reinvent the wheels. Um, and the development time is an aspect very important. So while these systems live that long, they tend to have a long development cycle up front um, as well, often de uh, defined by the hardware involved, by the large mechanics involved and physics involved, um, but also during the, due to the long development uh, time used to be in the, in the software world. So there are some changes now. Um, while those system stacks used to be pretty proprietary in the past, there's commoditization going on. Already in the past years, but now really for sure, uh, the differentiating level moved up significantly and um, companies involved in this business, they no longer differentiate about the lower level features over the whole system and the value is much higher than it used to be. Um, that means more and more standard components come in while they have to maintain, of course, these properties I mentioned on the left. And another thing which comes in is the connectivity. So we're talking about IoT, also industrial, of course, and that means that these systems would used to be pretty isolated, running in, in yeah, physical boxes without any connection except maybe power to the outside, are now suddenly connected to the cloud. So they have to fulfill the same security requirement, even if not harder, than all the networks, uh, appliances, and all the uh, server systems you have out there as well. And that, of course, breaks some of the assumptions previously made, like you develop once, you ship, and then you are done. No, actually the hard work then only starts. So the maintenance of those systems over that long lifetime is now really essential also for security aspects. And therefore, um, we founded um, this civil infrastructure platform project as a collaboration project under the roof of the Linux Foundation simply to bring in um, these requirements and bring in the members that we have already um, and work on the on a super long-term maintained industrial-grade embedded Linux platform for this domain. So what has to be done? First of all, the joining the forces on the commodity components. That means there are a lot of already available, we can just tick it, but sometimes we have to add certain qualities, as I mentioned before, the requirements from the industrial, uh, um, industrial domain, extend the existing frameworks and existing components. Um, that has to be done and best done in a collaborative manner. And, well, we also don't want to go through these uh, forks and branches uh, that many other domains already went through. Um, these things have to be done upstream. That means we have to search for the collaboration with the respective open source communities and work with them together, ensuring the quality already in the mainline project and not only in some, in some forks and special versions. But then actually the hard work, as I said, starts the maintenance, the long-term maintenance, and this is significant costs. Um, these are costs that we definitely need to share in order to yeah, keep the overall cost of these systems reasonable. And yeah, as I said, there is no differentiating actually on this part. And then there are a lot of things coming up. The pace of the development is increasing, um, and the best way to adopt to this is to share also the innovation on this. Um, so work together on the core components, on the core frameworks that build those systems now and in the future regarding IoT architectures, regarding machine-to-machine -machine connectivity and things like this. So our base layer that we want to define in this civil infrastructure platform we are working on, um, as I said, is an is a industrial-grade software stack fulfilling safety, reliability, security, and maintainability requirements. Um, there are some gaps to be filled regarding existing open source projects, and that's where we come in, that we insist on 
providing these kind of qualities support the existing projects with um, adding these qualities to the baselines. Um, that may consist of specific, uh, specifications of um, yeah, the on-device um, software stack. So a vision behind this basically at the end, you just say, okay, I'm going to develop an industrial system. I will pick the standard open source stack for this, which is well-defined like an Android system for the mobile device, like a uh, carrier-grade Linux for the telecom community, or like the automotive people are doing with their systems. There is no differentiating in between these systems anymore. It makes easier to develop on these platforms together. That involves the kernel, that involves the file system, the base system, and for selected reference hardware. Of course, it also involves the tooling in a round um, so that we um, well, have um, the ability to rebuild those systems, to change those systems not only now when they are being deployed, but also after decades while they are being maintained and, and upgraded continuously. Testing involves this, testing frameworks, um, intensively, currently done with the whole system by each member themselves for each product, but of course the base layer is easily shared and also regarding the test efforts. And yeah, SDKs and APIs around this. So basically, it's the idea to trigger an, an, an ecosystem development um, for industrial-based systems around these core components. There's a lot of things to do, um, and as we are still a small project, um, we have to focus on something, and this focus is specifically right now on the long-term maintenance. Maintaining components for a period which is beyond what's currently being done, specifically for the domain, or the embedded industrial domain. So, again, this is a list of, of uh, topics and components, which is broad, um, where we see potential activities, where we haven't said, okay, we will do this and this definitely, um, and, well, except for some aspects, actually. It starts on the device side um, with um, the base system, like the kernel, with base qualities that this kernel has to have, like real-time support, like certain virtualization features we need. Um, it goes on to user space component, a set of, of base component we need um, for these systems, um, up to the middlewares, um, like standards we have out there, OPC OR, things like this, where we want to move to. On the side, again, the, the tool aspects of it, um, build environments which have to be available for this long period. May it be Yocto based, may it be other solutions based. Test automation, tracing, reporting, configuration management, and so on. There are also aspects beyond this, non-technical, where we uh, can collaborate on um, concept. The safety, for example, the safety domain is a broad field. Applied this on, on open source component is a hot topic. Um, not just by us, but of course, it is a consolidation point for us to bring this together. Um, but also aspects like license clearing, which is important for our domain specifically. We are shipping devices, we are shipping software with uh, open source license on top, and yeah, they have to be uh, fulfill the requirements and the, the quality that you expect from today. To clarify just briefly the scope of what systems we are targeting, um, the field goes from the, well, kind of server-like environments, high-end device, device environments, down to everything which is capable of running Linux. So we definitely exclude, so far, um, the smaller systems, the microcontroller systems, which are still in use in certain areas, but for our domain, the specific focus is on the more complex systems. Um, where Linux is capable of running on, so this may change, of course, as Linux is improving, but. Um, that's currently the focus on this. As the project is currently set up, well, we have a number of member companies um, providing the budget of our uh, project. And from this budget, we primarily um, finance our uh, developer set. So we have a certain number of, of fixed developers. See more about it later. Plus, each member is um, invited um, and is participating with own developers in, in the activities around it. And that leads to contributions, either to existing collaborative projects, 
like the real-time Linux project, for example, um, or distribution projects, um, or to the creation of new projects on the long run. So currently, there is no concrete project being launched by us, um, but this is something we definitely keep in mind. And all these contributions to upstream open source projects, again, have to be not just done once, but have to be maintained over a longer period. So all these projects have some kind of maintenance already. Some only on one version, others really with a complex system behind it. Um, so where there is a gap, where there is no long-term maintenance of 10 years plus, and this is in most cases the case, um, we come in. Either by supporting directly the communities in extending their existing lifetime, or by taking over when they move on to the next major versions. Most concretely is this of course, been done, and this is the most prominent topic right now on the, on the Linux kernel. Very important, this is not a, the, dissol, the goal of our project is not the fork of existing project. The goal is working upstream. So we have the policy set to ourselves that if whatever we adopt and, and work on and maintain for a long period, we don't want to maintain something that we meant ourselves that comes in from the side way. We only maintain what is accepted by the respective open source project as, as upstream component. That, of course, means that, yeah, um, some of the BSP-like approaches we find out there in the industry is not really the way we want to go um, for a long-term period. And you can imagine easily that this is also not technically and a quality point of view um, the right way to go. So looking at the kernel, how it looks like in this key component for us, right now we already have, of course, long-term maintenance there. So there are the LTS trees, the LTS versions, with a lifetime of a couple of years, some longer, some shorter, but none of them in the range that we are heading for. There's also another initiative called the LTSI, Long-Term Stable Initiative, which is not just maintaining regarding security fixes and, and functional fixes, but which are also initially um, using their, their kernel version in order to broaden the support of an older kernel version. So they, they include backports of, um, uh, of board support packages, of um, SOC support, which is upstream, but not in the version they want to maintain over the long period. So they augment basically what LTS is for. That exists. And it's being used in existing product a lot. But right now, every company does its own. So every company picks a certain version from a third party, from its own development, defines it, this version to be in the product X, and then maintains it for this product, in the ideal place, maybe for a product series or for a broader scope. But it's not really collaborative work, as it's right now. What we want to do is to replace this lower part, basically, to offer a replacement where we collaborate on this work. And for the kernel, that means concretely, we extend the lifetime of LTS, not every version. That's probably not dealable, not manageable from the resource point of view, at least not right now. But um, for a well-defined set of versions, um, and we also implement something which extends um, the, the support of a specific base version by additional features, additional hardware support. So I will see that later on there is a merge window, basically, which enables the backporting of features, the backporting of, um, of board support into our base version. And then and eventually we close this window and go for for the long-term maintenance regarding security fixes, regarding functional fixes. And that, while well, we always talk about this 10-year thing, so 10-year is the lower bound, basically. This is currently what you get from uh, many of the long-term available SOCs um, as, as a lifetime. So products are being made with the same SOC for this phase, basically. Then they have to be redesigned because the, the silicon vendors provide some new version and, and no longer ship the old one. Um, and that's possibly the point where you also have to rethink about upgrading your base version. But as long as those hardware replacements are identically available, the software stack should not change in most cases. And that's basically the area we want to work in, with the kernel specifically, but also with other components. So 
the concrete plans going on uh, regarding the, the super long-term stable kernel. Well, we have to establish a development process for this, looking a lot at what existing projects are doing, like LTSI, with this merge window thing I mentioned it already, and with a certain validation behind it, of course. Um, we will repeat these releases naturally um, to be defined period. Um, and we will have to establish a strong validation on this. Kernel test infrastructure will be required, but also more testing on the devices, additional feature than it's currently been done. And the results shall be shared. So in order to start off with this, we are very happy to announce that we just created or are creating um, the super long-term stable team for the CIP project. So Ben Hutchings, um, employed by, by CodeThing, will join us and support us as the super long-term kernel maintainer. Ben Hutchings is well known for its Debian contribution and, and uh, package maintenance, and he's currently already maintaining several LTS kernel versions for more than the couple of two or three years, actually. Um, and he will extend this work for the CIP kernel to come. Uh, he will additionally be supported by another developer, which is to be defined, um, and start his work in September, so very soon. First of all, with the setup of the development environment we need and the validation process that comes first naturally, and we'll then prepare and perform the first SLTS kernel releases. Um, further on, there are f uh, the, the, the support for super long term will have to be extended to other components, other core packages, and his expertise in this area of maintenance, long term maintenance, we will reuse, of course, in order to extend our support to other areas of the core system, not just the kernel. So, which version of the kernel will it be? A good question. Um, as with all long-term kernel stable releases, always a miracle which version to pick. And we also thought a lot about it. It's no official announcement yet, but I would like to make it a bit more transparent what we are thinking about and how uh, we thought, um, what the criteria are for us. So, of course, it makes a lot of sense. It is essential that we base our own version of super long-term maintenance on, on existing maintenance, long-term maintenance kernel. Otherwise, we would replicate too much work. And of course, you also want to synchronize with LTSI. So work being done there um, should influence and, and benef be beneficial for our work and vice versa. We are working for the same targets, for the same goals. And there's overlap a lot. There might be some difference, or there are surely some difference in, in certain aspects. But in general, the more we can synchronize, the more we can benefit from each other, the better. Key criteria, of course, is the broad usage of a specific kernel version in civil infrastructure platforms. So we were thinking about what version to pick initially. One option would be taking an older version, which is currently being deployed in the majority of, of products of the members, and um, which is also being uh, going out of maintenance rather soon, and basically, yeah, right on, do the job on this version. Um, or the alternative is pick something which is currently being under preparation to come up in products. So which is currently, yeah, in the selection process, so to say, for, for products to come of the members. And this is the second part actually we chose to go because it's way more critical right now that we, we have a perspective for our upcoming projects, uh, products um, where which version we can really rely on to go for. So. We are still in discussion. We have an internal idea on this. It's not yet completely settled. And we are open for further input and ideas and suggestion on this. Um, we will announce as soon as it's ready and where we are feel confident about that we can really provide this very long-term maintenance with a reasonable low risk. Um, the final decision, of course, is with our steering committee. Um, this is how the project works. But again, we are open for discussions and input on this. Essential for ensuring that um, these long-term kernel, when they pull in updates, fixes, changes, are still stable, still in all regards uh, major enough, is testing. So one of the actual concrete tasks to do before releasing a kernel is to ensure that the test infrastructure is working properly. So the goal behind it is um, yeah, performing tests on real hardware, of course, um, 
because this is what is specifically different in our domain, the various of, of industry hardware. Um, we will define certain reference platforms based on the input that we have on existing uh, members and, and the products we see as uh, relevant for this. Um, and yeah, ensure that this is um, covered by the test. Um, we have to have a short round trip time of the tests, um, so within hours and not days or weeks, um, to react quickly on, on security issues and be quickly ready to uh, ensure that a new version is ready to be released. Um, so not in the focus like others are doing right now is the long-term continuous testing, for example, like the OSADL doings with the real-time kernel. We don't want to replicate these efforts. Um, but, of course, what is required in our domain is the availability of the results. You have to sometimes prove it to certain authorities what you've done. And so it's an, an archiving feature and the insurance of the regression freeness of, of older versions versus newer versions um, has to be sometimes provided. So we have to have these results long-term available. And, of course, no replications of existing activities. So we, try to, we will try to align the activities with other communities, like, for example, the AGL, who have similar requirements and similar goals, but different target systems and, but, yeah, similar testing infrastructures. So what are they currently looking into um, is uh, reusing the, the kernel CI infrastructure for this, or the kernel CI uh, framework for this. So we have um, currently already set up a private instance of this uh, kernel CI framework. Um, so that member companies can run on their, in their own labs, their own platforms on it, not just the reference board like we have available for everyone, but also the more interesting things, which actually are the products that we want to use the specific version on. So that's also the idea of this framework, having a distributed test infrastructure where everyone can bring in their own systems without having to hand them out maybe prior to the release including what? We defined a standard hardware rack where um, members, would, members can replicate and, and, and build on and yeah, add their own tools to this. Um, so it's, it's purely locally operation. Um, we will share the results of these tests in the public, on the public website. Um, and yeah, that's, that's the, the base system, so kernel CI, if you don't know it, it's basically testing if a kernel is still capable of booting um, a specific board, not much more tests are performed. So if the system is up and running and reacting, test is passed. Um, of course, it's not enough. Um, specifically, you look into uh, things like real-time requirements and other things. You have to do um, more testing on the target. There are other frameworks for this, for example, Fuego is one candidate which have to be combined with this in order to ensure that um, yeah, also the functional features of a more complex system is still fulfilled when we update. And yeah, as I mentioned, the, the goal is to feedback the results, plug into existing um, kernel CI deployment, possibly deliver in the same platform also our results for our kernels then. The kernel is one thing, but of course the system is more than just the kernel. Um, there are also user space packages involved, and essentially you also need the support for these packages. So user space is a vast area, and if you think about how many systems or many components are in your embedded systems, possibly there are quite a few, but usually they are much less than you have in the big machines. So essential for us, therefore, is in the first step to really focus on the on a minimal bootable and uh, yeah, system with basic functionality available. The minimal viable system for embedded industrial control system, for example, is the criteria to selecting packages into this. It shall be components which are commonly used in these systems. Nothing too obscure, nothing too unusual. And primarily interesting, of course, are those packages which are security sensitive, which either have some external interfaces or are processing data coming in and, yeah, have security requirements. Not only, but primarily. Also important, of course, and even if the component is well established, um, we have to assess if these components stay like this. It's available for a longer period because we have to maintain it for decades, for a decade at least. Um, so it's not that easy to pick the right one. And some of the components we find in, in, uh, in the other domains are attractive, but also frequently changing and frequently um, 
moving in their directions, moving in their relevance possibly. So picking the right one, which will stay more or less like this on a long period is of course another challenge and as I continue to put into mind. Again, we are open for discussions, um, taking inputs, taking suggestions, taking criterias. Um, so you're welcome. Just to give you an idea how this could look like, it's really small on the device side, but it's essential for the system to boot up. Besides the kernel with its special uh, real-time features on top, um, the base system you always have is things like the, the busy box or similar tools in order to run something and control something. You have a base library. Um, you have some essential components for, for security, um, for connecting to the devices secure SSL libraries and open SSH and things like this. On the one side, on the device, and on this, in the same side, of course, you also have to ensure that what you are building for the device can be rebuilt after a long period. So you have to maintain also the development environment in one way or the other. That's not the same approach you're applying, of course, for the on-device components, but in the end, you have to be able to keep the same results reproducible after a decade. So whatever comes on the development side has to be considered at least and possibly also tu tuned to a certain degree in order to ensure this reproducibility. So as we are still a rather small project, um, we give us ourselves some time to grow. Focusing first of all on, on the kernel and on a small number of core packages in the first phase ensuring for those that the super long-term stable is, cap is, is possible with these and we the, provide the releases on a regular basis on these components and then slowly grow in scope regarding adding more packages to this, broadening the, users, the user base and on the long run also adding additional um, features on top, maybe creating new frameworks, new components, new middlewares specifically um, missing so far in our domain um, or not being available as an open source and a solution yet. The milestones we set ourselves um, for this year's look pretty good. So we launched the project in April. Um, we established the, the requirements on the base layer um, and we are currently working on um, yeah, realizing them so we have Define the common component for us which are relevant um, uh, in feature size, so um, the, the feature of the kernel, basically. Um, what is now to come, basically, is to bring the, the maintenance into operation. Announcement of the maintainer is one step, but of course we have to deliver also um, on, on, on bringing up the development process, on bringing up the test infrastructure, and then on releasing the first version of this. That's the next thing to come. So realize the plans that we made, and then the next but one year basically extend on the features and um, the number of components we want to have. So this is, of course, an advertisement talk to join the activity. Um, in one way or the other, we are most interested, of course, in members, but not we are also interested in discussion and exchange. Um, the currently member set, um, the founding members, are Hitachi, Siemens, and Toshiba, together with CodeThink and Plathome. Uh, we are in constant discussion with other interested parties. Just before this uh, presentation, we had an interesting talk with another candidate on this. Um, and uh, we see there is a big chance to join on this topic. Um, in an industry domain which used to be pretty separate, pretty isolated, eyes in sinking in silos um, on this platform. So there is a big chance behind it um, in coming together on this way. Why join? Well, we sh ship our results in public. It's open source. It will be available. There is no desire to join. You can just use it, of course, but you can't influence it. The project decision to be made, of course, are up to the members regarding which version will come, which version to pick, where to focus on, which boards, which SOCs, which components to include. 
That is the added value of joining. Besides demonstrating to your customers, to your users, you are compatible with this infrastructure, with this CIP base layer. And there are additional values on top, of course. But this is the core, actually, we are looking for, uh, we are providing um, for the membership. So just for reference for the context, um, but I'm also around, talk to me, talk to many of these people here in the front rows who are part of the project supporting us. Uh, go to our website, look at our mailing list. Again, it's, a, it's a still a fresh project, but you have to keep in mind our domain is slow by nature, but once we are moving, we are moving for a long time. So don't expect a, a hip active yet development as you may know from the kernel or from other communities and other collaboration projects, um, but we are growing, we are growing with a long breath and that's the good thing about it. So thank you for attention and I'm open to take questions. I'm also open to ask questions. So who of you here in the audience is involved in this domain or is delivering embedded systems um, or is, are you just basically interested at all? Okay, there are at least two. Three, four, well, I know of the members. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's an interesting domain as well, true. Yeah, I think there, there is a lot of overlap. So we define it as a social infrastructure platform. But one of the, some of the requirements, maybe not all, are shared with other domains. Um, so a lot of uh, interest comes also from automotive, and I'm pretty sure also automotive will share and benefit from our work, while as we are benefiting from their activities to standardize on Linux systems. They have a little, little bit different requirements in some areas and a little bit different lifetime sometimes. Uh, but in the end, it's the same. So another interesting aspect, actually, yeah? Point of sales, yeah? Yeah. We're currently doing low-end uh, inexpensive control services for drinking water. Mm -hmm. uh, community systems that are below typically what you would find in the city. Uh, city has money to spend. Most community water systems do not, so they're falling apart. Right. Yeah, um, well, we are in the big business, so to say. <laughs> we provided solution for the large deployment specifically, but this doesn't exclude uh, medium-sized or even small-sized. Once we can standardize on the platform, it's beneficial for all. That's the idea. Yeah, that's the idea. Cool. Okay. Well, thank you all for coming. I know this is an untypical event for this kind of topic. <laughs> so I'm very pleased to see you here, nevertheless. And well, if you have further questions, follow up. Don't hesitate directly or via our electronic channels. Thanks again. <laughs> <laughs>